What's up guys, my name's Brandon and this past week has been yet another crazy week in the world of Apple and we've been covering the new hardware here on the channel lately, but I wanted to take a break from that and update you guys on the software side of things. So on Thursday, Apple surprised us with the release of iOS 14.7 beta 1, which came out before iOS 14.6 was even released to the public. So that was a surprise. And then the very next day on Friday, the same day that the new M1 iMac and M1 iPad Pros were released, Apple surprised us again with the release of iOS 14.6 RC2, which went out to both developers and to public beta testers. So yeah, Apple continues to be very unpredictable, but I have been using both iOS 14.7 beta 1 and the second RC build of iOS 14.6 for a few days, and I wanted to let you guys know how they've been running for me, discuss the performance, the battery life, the connectivity, the changes, and more. So let's start off with iOS 14.7 beta 1, and this is a very small update. I mean, it is a 0.7 update updates you really don't expect much at these late releases however apple didn't include anything in the release notes so it's really weird because there's really nothing at all on the surface that it seems like changed but there was something found by 9to5mac if you go into the home application and you long press on one of these home pods and you scroll down a little bit right underneath alarms there's going to be a new section here for timers so you'll be able to set a timer on your HomePod now straight from within the app instead of having to ask Siri to set a timer for you. So that will be pretty useful if you have HomePods and you set timers like in the kitchen and things like that, which I actually do. And I use Siri in the past, but now I won't have to do that. Now, Apple has also expanded out the air quality feature inside of the weather application to other countries like Canada, like Italy, Spain, the Netherlands, France, and more. So you can see here, I have Milan, Italy. And if we go down a little bit, you see we have the air quality feature right there so this was not here previously but now we have this and this was a server side update so it's not going to be just for 14.7 this did roll out server side inside of the weather application and it's the same for canada so we have ontario right here and if we go down a little bit you can see the air quality index is right there so a lot more countries have been added to support this air quality feature which is nice also thanks to a reddit user it appears that there is a new organization of photos when you plug your iphone into a computer so like if you want to transfer photos off of your phone onto a computer it looks like there is a new way that apple is organizing those folders on your iPhone when you see it you know, from the computer. And I know a lot of people ask me as well about the spatial and lossless audio in iOS 14.7. A lot of people thought that right when it came out that we were gonna have like features for that, but we don't have anything new related to spatial or lossless audio in 14.7. That's going to be a server side update because Apple already said that you're only going to need to be on iOS 14.6 to take advantage of this feature. So we still just have the Apple Digital Master badge right there and that's it for all this music. But of course in June, you know, in just a few weeks, we will start seeing the spatial and lossless audio roll out to Apple Music. And also speaking of lossless audio, it looks like the HomePod and the HomePod Mini are both going to support lossless audio in a future software update. So Apple actually answered this on a frequently asked questions support page on their website about lossless audio. So this is kind of a surprise, but it is very welcomed and I will definitely be testing out lossless audio on the HomePod and the HomePod Mini. But of course, lossless audio is not transmittable over Bluetooth, so that's why we don't have it for like the AirPods Pro or the AirPods Max. But that's pretty much everything when it comes to iOS 14.7 in terms of new features and changes. Really not a ton going on, but then again, it is just the first beta, so we could see some more features or changes added in future betas as well. Now, when it comes to iOS 14.6 RC2, nothing has visually changed, of course, going from one RC to the next. Really the only reason that Apple includes a second RC build is if a major bug you know, was found in the original RC build and Apple had to patch that before you know, pushing out the final. So there's something on the back end here for the iPhone on iOS 14.6 RC1 that Apple thought was a threat. Maybe it was a security thing. Maybe it was the issue with CarPlay crashing all the time. There was something that Apple was not happy with. So they pushed out that second RC build. It could even have something to do with the new iPad and the new iMac that were released on the same day. So we'll have to wait and see. But as far as you know, anything new, you're not going to find anything else new here. And you can see the update size was just 156 megabytes. So I didn't cover this on the channel just because I was covering all the hardware. But you know, you're not really missing out on much because there's really nothing new 
in this second RC build. And like I mentioned, the CarPlay crashing has been a very big issue for a lot of people on iOS 14.6. I've actually seen this quite a bit, just CarPlay issues in general. I mean, some people are saying that text messages are not coming through on CarPlay anymore. Some people are saying that CarPlay, the music application is just crashing on CarPlay. So a lot of issues, it seems like with CarPlay on 14.6. So maybe this second RC build fixed that. And I've not seen any reports of it on 14.7. So it looks like Apple is definitely trying to work on that. And as far as green tents goes, I did have a couple of people tell me that it got better with the first RC build of 14.6. So the second RC build could even, you know, build on that and continue fixing green tents because this is likely a software issue, just like it was, you know, a couple years ago with the iPhone 10R. But as far as bugs go, we still do have some bugs in both 14.6 RC2 and iOS 14.7 beta one. Now these are bugs that have just been existing for a while now. They're not new bugs to either one of these two software versions, but we still have the issue where Siri cuts out mid sentence. So I tested this on the second RC build and it's still happening with me for like maps directions. And even when asking like long math questions or something like that, it'll just cut out before, you know, Siri actually finishes the sentence, which is pretty annoying, especially for maps. And as far as the music cue bug goes, that is still present sometimes on 14.6 RC2 and 14.7. It's still not fully fixed. It definitely happens less frequently than it did on 14.5 and prior versions, but it's still not all the way fixed. And again, you can get, you know, those three lines to show up if you just go out of the queue and back into it, if it's doing that. So still kind of frustrating, but you know, at least Apple is working on it and it's gotten better over time. Hopefully iOS 15 doesn't have anything like that though. And it's the same with the AirPlay to HomePod feature. Sometimes when I AirPlay to a HomePod, you know, the music starts playing, but it still shows like the song I was playing on my iPhone and it just shows it as pause. And then when I start to play it, it plays it on my iPhone and not the HomePod. So still some issues to work out there. Hopefully Apple fixes that before iOS 15, especially for those who, you know, may not have a device that's supported by iOS 15. So hopefully Apple fixes those two pretty major issues in my opinion with the music application. And then also I have been seeing people mention that they're having the loud notification bug more frequently now on 14.7 beta one. So I haven't really seen anybody complain about this on the second RC build or even the first RC build of 14.6. But some people after updating to 14.7 have reported that they are having the loud notification bug, which has been around since iOS 14, like the original iOS 14. So that's probably not anything new just in 14.7. They may have just noticed it, it may have just come up randomly. I don't know, but that's been going on for quite a while. And I've had that as well. I've experienced it for quite a while as well. Now, as far as the performance goes, quite a few of you guys have reported getting better performance on the second RC build of iOS 14.6. And those of you who jumped straight to iOS 14.7 have said pretty much the same thing. Now, as for me, iOS 14.6 RC2 has felt about the same as the first RC, but iOS 14.7 beta one is a little bit smoother than 14.6 for me. I did have random stutter sometimes on iOS 14.6, at least on the first RC build. I haven't yet on the second RC build, but I would still have it sometimes. Uh, but I have not had that one time on 14.7 beta one so far. And I've seen a lot of you guys report the same thing about 14.7, just feeling very smooth, especially for a first beta. And as far as Geekbench scores for 14.6 RC2, we already did the Geekbench scores for 14.7 beta one. So I'm not going to show that, but we did actually get a pretty solid score here for the second RC build of 14.6. So you can see we got a 1601 on the single core and a 4161 on the multi-core. And you can see compared to the first RC build, the single core is higher on the second, but the multi-core is higher on the first. So some pretty interesting results there. Always interesting to see the Geekbench, even though it doesn't really tell you, you know, how it's going to perform in your day-to-day -day life. And as far as battery life goes, both iOS 14.6 and 14.7 have been pretty solid for me when it comes to battery life. But after reading through your guys' comments and your feedback on social media, you know, most are actually getting better battery life on iOS 14.6 RC2 than RC1. And those who went to iOS 14.7 are seeing less battery drain than they had in previous versions as well. So this is always, you know, possible to be just placebo because it's the new software, but that's what you guys have been saying. But as for me personally, I've really not had any issues with battery life at all in quite a while. So, you know, there's not really a difference in battery life going from 14.6 to 14.7 for me on any device. So now what is next for Apple? So today is Sunday, May 23rd. I usually record these follow-up videos and post them on Saturday. But of course, we've had a lot going on with the new Apple products, so I had to push that back to Sunday this week. But of course, the regular Saturday follow-ups will continue next week. But anyways, when can we expect to see iOS 14.6 final? And I think we're going to see that within the next two days. So I think early 
in the week. We will see iOS 14.6 get released to the public finally. And it's probably going to be on Tuesday. Apple has really loved those Tuesday releases, you know, just over time. So I would expect to see iOS 14.6 on the 24th of the 25th, most likely on the 25th right there. Now we should also see iOS 14.7 beta 2 next week, but that could come really on any day. It's hard to say right now when that will come. We could see it as early as Monday or as late as Friday, or it may not even come next week. It may come the following week in June. So we'll have to wait and see on that. But of course, June is going to be all about iOS 15, which we'll see the first beta on June 7th. So I cannot wait to cover iOS 15 here on the channel. I know you guys can't wait either. I will be live streaming and just bringing you guys a ton of content when it comes to iOS 15. But yeah, guys, that is the follow up on iOS 14.6 RC2 and iOS 14.7 beta one. Hope you guys enjoy this video. If you did, as always, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you guys subscribe for a lot more coverage, including the iOS 15 coverage very very soon but anyways guys thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon